In this lesson, you will learn how to use the object identification center for Selenium, which is provided by the UFT developer. Basically, the Selenium SDK is being extended with the UFT developer for Selenium SDK with extended set of locators. So you can see here that using the object identification center for Selenium, you can identify um, elements by visible text. Yeah, so using the Selenium uh, capabilities and with the Selenium type of script, you can use uh, an additional element uh, by their type. You can uh, have elements by attributes and style. You can make use of uh, regular expressions as a locator value. You can put a combination of different locators to identify uh, the specific object. So it's really there to increase the stability in recognition of your Selenium scripts um, if you want to really still use Selenium uh, then UFT developer adds this capability on top of it. So let's go back into IntelliJ and here I have already created a um, test case, um, a project which was based on uh, Selenium. So what you have to do is you create a new project for UFT developer. It should be a testing project. You can uh, set the framework you want. And here you say it should be you using the automation SDK for Selenium. And then you create this project. It will automatically create this one sample test for Selenium. And here I have already a sample script, which I will use to run the Gecko web driver, which is based on Firefox. And I will go to the help page of UFT developer and search for Selenium and just press on the click button. So this is basically what uh, we provide by using, um, when you're using Selenium, you can uh, search by C CSS selector or you can make use of XPath. So this script is really a Selenium script and we will see and learn how the UFT object identification center provide on top of it additional locators to make your script and handy to use. So let's um, run this small script for now and see what happens. So I started the script. It has started the execution. So as a next step, I expect um, it to open the window of Firefox. So I can see here Firefox has been opened. Now it should uh, click in the search and type the text Selenium and press the button. And now it should wait here until test is completed. So test is uh, finished. I can see here test pass. So this is fine. I can close it um, and go back to IntelliJ. So now in order to really use the UFT developer Selenium object identification center, I need to make sure that my web drivers are configured and installed correctly. Uh, on my file system, on my uh, Windows client. If I want to have multiple web drivers for uh, the different browser, then I need to make sure that those are available. Um, so there's an instruction on uh, the UFT developer help how to do it. Once you have done it, you can open the object identification center. And here you can see uh, the object identification center looks similarly to the one we provide with uh, for the normal object identification cent uh, center for uh, UFT developer. Here you have to really make use of those browsers uh, which are listed here and they will be started. So I have only configured the Firefox um, web driver in order to demonstrate this feature. If I click on it, it will launch the Firefox browser. So let's do it. You can see Firefox browser is launched and I can go now to the area where I would like to have this ADM. Let me go there and copy the right URL. Paste this URL here. And now you can see this uh, is uh, ready to spy. So what I can do now is I can 
spy the different objects. So let's say I spy this search. And you see here it uh, builds up the whole tree of the DOM and I can now use the different um, properties to identify the object. So you see directly here you have uh, the standard uh, properties and uh, recognition um, methods to identify the object using Selenium SDK. So I could say I want to use the CSS selector. Um, I have here the XPath. Um, the one which I want to use, I can just select it directly from here. But I can also say I want to make use of the whole hierarchy which is here and uh, make sure that the whole hierarchy is also uh, part of my recognition. Could be more complex, but um, uh, the possibility is here. So you can also identify the other objects. For now, I'm not going to use it. You can see we ha have added some additional attributes uh, which are also can be used to identify the object. Um, you have your area label, autocomplete class, placeholder, and the type itself, the type of this uh, object. Um, you have then additionally to that, you have also this visible text you could uh, potentially use if there would be a visible text uh, which is not here currently. For instance, if I would uh, identify or spy those objects like basic SDK, then I should be able to see a visible text. So let's do it just to demonstrate. So I spied SDK and you can see here it appears. So you can also make use of those things to really like uh, identify the different objects by the uh, text which is visible on the screen. But uh, for now we are going to concentrate on this field. So let's scan it here. And what I will do is I will, I don't have a visible text here. So what I will do is I will make use of those additional UFT developer attributes. So I would like to have the type placeholder I don't need. So this is fine. And maybe additionally to that, I could also make use of one of the standard, um, like the CSS selector. And once I'm done, I can say copy the code. It will copy the code into the clipboard and you could go into your editor and enter the code here and you can see how it is built up there. So it would be enough if uh, you have um, the attributes, so by different attributes, it builds a new hash map, which includes then those attributes uh, provided by UFT developer and you can make use of it in combination to the standard way of working of Selenium and uh, make use of both um, identification properties and identify this item. So and afterwards I can say send keys and enter here for instance let's say also Selenium um, new query. So let me take this and here we need to make sure that those things are um, commented out so I will comment those lines for now and also for the search I will comment it out and let's do it in the same manner like we have done with Selenium so we will identify define a web element here which will be the search box and the search box will look like this and on the search box itself I can now I can now uh, say what I want. Let me clean the script. Yeah, the other ones I cannot work. And here on that web element, I can now say search box dot send keys. Selenium new search. And after I've searched, I can go and click on the second item which is actually the search button here and this uh, probably I could identify also by a combination of um, the existing properties so let's say I selected this one and want to see if this is identifiable yes it is identifiable I copy it generate the code and put it here this is a new web element 
which is the search button. And here I use the combination of uh, those uh, properties and attributes. And below I can then do the search button dot click. And that's about it. So let's run the script. So I think that's it. Let me close my object identification center as well as Firefox. And now I will run the script. Okay, here I'm missing something. And um, I have not closed properly the different brackets which I have here. So first of all, I need to make this complete here one two I think now it is fine let me run it again yeah it looks much better so now we can see it has started the browser is navigated to the address and now it should enter here after four seconds Selenium new search, and you can see here the Selenium new search has been entered here and it has identified those objects. So it's a great way to extend your existing Selenium script and make them more stable using the UFT developer uh, locators and uh, working with the UFT developer object identification center for Selenium and, and make your Selenium script even more stable.